Hello and welcome to today's video where we'll be giving you five top tips to improve your Vault Basic experience. Jumping straight into it, we'll be looking at how you can customize your Vault user interface to suit your needs. Now, if you weren't aware, since Vault 2023, you now have the ability to apply a dark mode to your Vault client rather than having to look at this blinding white light all day. So if you go to Tools and then Options, within the Options window, we have our Theme option. And then we can change this from the current light view to either the classic view, or in my case, I want to change it to the dark view. Um, and now if I come in and look at my files, I have my nice dark view that corresponds to my dark view in Inventor and AutoCAD and so on. The next thing we can look at is customizing the properties that we see when searching through our uh, files within Vault. So by default, I get my name, who it's been created by, when it was checked in, and the comment field. But you can come in and add or remove these fields as you see fit. To do this, you just need to right click on one of the fields then you have the ability to come in and customize this view where you can come in and choose any fields that you like, where you can either remove fields, or in my case, I just want to add fields um, or add properties to my main view. So I'm going to come in and choose the checked out by option. Um, let's grab the description option as well. Um, file extension is good, and maybe we'll just grab one more. Let's do the material to see any materials that have been assigned to our part files as well. So I'll click OK and close there, and then we can see on the right hand side all of those properties now show up against each of my files, and I've got some materials that show up as well. I can then come in and modify the position of these properties or fields, um, expand or contract their size. Um, and I have this file extension field over here. I don't really want to see that, but it would be great if I could group these files by their specific types. So if I right click on file extension and say group by this field, now all of my DWGs come together my assemblies are grouped, and then my part files, and so on and so forth. If I happen to have PDFs and Office files in this folder as well, those would be grouped together as well. The second topic we're going to be looking at is the viewer that is built in to Vault itself. So if I come in and click on this Palm System Drawing, and I come in and click on the View tab, I can come in and view this particular drawing. I can make measurements against it. I can create mockups and so on and so forth. The same thing applies for 3D models. If I click on this ARM system top level assembly, for instance, I can come in, open it up and start interrogating it without having to leave the Vault client itself. I can click on this view button on the right hand side here it pops out into its own window, which I can then maximize and come in and view my files. Um, again, I have the ability to come in and explode this model so to see all the individual components that make up this ARM system. I can also come in and create my section views. So if I wanted to see the internal components of this particular model, I could cut it down its origin plane and come look at it. Obviously, I can drag them backwards and forwards. Um, I can come in and measure from point to point. Or I can come in and create my markups as well. So let's just look on this back face, for instance. Start the markup tool. I'm going to start my Rev Cloud option. Uh, and maybe we'll just add a markup here to say that we need to increase the size of these holes. OK.
not quite the best position, but we'll leave it there for now. And now I can come in, save that snapshot. It will save it as a PNG. And then I can go ahead and email this to one of my colleagues, or I could just drag it straight back into Vault for them to view within the Vault client itself. Let's close this all down and go on to topic number three or point number three, which is the search functionality that you have within Vault Basic. Now, Vault is based on a SQL database. So all of the metadata that corresponds to each individual file is stored in an SQL database. It's indexed as well, uh, which allows for extremely rapid searching within a vault that can contain upwards of hundreds of thousands of files. Uh, to search within vault, on the right hand side of vault we have this search window and then I can come in and search against any property within vault by typing in a word or a phrase in here. So I'm going to search for the word arm and then any property that has the word arm in it is going to show up in my list. Sometimes I need to be a bit more specific than searching against multiple fields. So if I come in and expand my query builder, rather than searching again against multiple properties, I can search against individual properties themselves. And again, it's pretty much any property within Vault. Um, user created or system properties as well. So I have my file name over here. I'm just gonna copy or cut that arm out, paste it into the file name. And now it should only show me uh, files that have the word arm within the file name rather than in any other property. And we can see that our list goes from tens of uh, files to these five files over here. I can also combine criteria together. So maybe I want to find all of the files that are named arm as well as created by a specific user. Maybe this user Enzo that I can see on my screen here. So now both of these properties or criteria will need to be true in order to show up in my list. So I'm going to type in Enzo here. Let's just add an asterisk as a uh, modifier there, so I don't need to fill out the rest of his surname. I hit enter, and now we can see that we have one file checked out to Enzo that has the word arm in its file name. And on the topic of wildcards, uh, you have the ability to add in an asterisk, which again will include any string within the word, uh, otherwise, you can use a question mark to denote that a character is any character within the alphabet. Um, or you can use Boolean operators such as and or not. Um, and you can also use quotation marks to search for a specific phrase as well. So for instance, let's search for um, files that were created by Enzo as well as, so I'll type in or for that, and then type in administrator. Hit enter, and we're back to those five files that we had originally seen that have either been created by administrator or Enzo. Now, along with this standard query builder, you also have the find function that's found within your tools tab in Vault. And it should be one of your main vaulted buttons with the magnifying glass in your Vault um, toolbar. It works very similar to the search function that we'd just seen. You just have a few more conditional builders within this find function uh, in Vault. So, I like to create a search that shows me all of the files that have been checked out by me so I can keep track of what I have checked out. So I'm going to build out that search 
So I'm going to choose that checked out property. My condition, which can be either contained, does not contain, is or is not empty. Um, and then we have larger than, smaller than conditions as well. If we're looking at numerical values, for this one, I just want it to be contains, and then we'll do administrator. I'm going to add that to my search criteria, hit find, and now I can see I have a bunch of files that I need to check out. And if my colleagues need to work on these, it's probably a good idea to get them checked in once I'm done with modifying them. Again, I can also add multiple properties to my query builder or my find function and all of those criteria need to be true in order for them to show up against the list. So maybe I want to have a search that shows me all of the files that have been checked out by me this week. I already have my checked out by criteria. Now I just need to add in a date criteria to in be included in this find uh, query builder. So I know this checked out property here is a date value. So I'm going to select it. And rather than is, I'm going to choose, and again, rather than a specific date, I'm just going to say checked out is this week. I'll add that to my query list, click on find now, and we can see we have the same list of files that were checked out or are checked out by me this week. Uh, now why this is useful is I can now come in and save this search, give it a search name, so checked out by me or administrator. And now rather than having to come in and create this search every time, within my Vault Explorer, I have my searches tab and a checked out by administrator search. And now any files that are subsequently checked out will be updated in that search. So now I can see my list has grown ever so slightly. And if I come and check some files back in, or let's do an undo checkout in this case, if I go back to my search criteria, you can see my list has shrunk substantially. So it's just a nice way to keep track of files that are checked out by you or files with a specific set of properties that you want to keep track of. The next thing we're going to look at, which is tip number four, is the copy design functionality that's built into the Vault Basic client. Now recently they've removed the standard copy design functionality that you used to find in Vault Basic and they've taken the much more refined version that you find in the paid for versions of Vault, which is Vault Professional. They've essentially taken that functionality and moved it into Vault Basic. So if you wanted to copy a file, all you need to do is right click on the highest level that you want to copy across. So in this case, I'm going to choose this top level assembly, click on copy design, and now we can see this new user interface with for the copy design. Um, in order to copy design a file, you need to specify where you want to copy it to and which files you want to copy across. In this case, I'm going to click on copy branch two, uh, and then I can specify where I want to copy this ARM system assembly to. So I'm going to create a new folder within my designs folder. Let's call it maybe a site name. Press OK there. Click OK. And now if I expand all of these files, you can see all of them are going to be copied to this Somerset path. If I had a folder hierarchy within my original folder, it would retain that folder hierarchy when I do my copy design as well. 
Maybe I didn't need to copy every single file within this copy design though. Maybe some of these um, sub-assemblies can be reused and brought from the original folder location. In that case, rather than doing a copy, uh, I'm going to select these top three sub-assemblies here. I'll right click and rather than doing the copy, I'm going to reuse um, these files as well as their branches. So it's the sub-assembly and all of the children that belong to that sub-assembly rather than being copied across are just going to be reused within my new assembly. If I had a sub-assembly that I wanted to replace, for instance, I can do that as well. In this case, I don't need to do that. Then on the right-hand side of my copy design tool, I can see my name, well, the names of the new files that are going to be created. And we can see that the destination name is just going to be copy of, and then the original file name. To change this, all I need to do is, I'm going to right click and do a select all. And I, I could come in and modify the destination name of either each of these by setting the values of these. Um, or I'm going to come in, select all. And for this example, I'm just going to set the value of the prefix for all of them. I'm just going to add that site name in front of the copy design. Press OK, and now we can see our destination name has changed. I'm now happy with this copy design, so I can come in, execute that copy. It will create the folders that it needs to create, copy the files across, and now these files are ready for me to come in and modify to the point that they need to be modified for this particular job. Okay, so I can see my Somerset fol folder here with all the files that I wanted to have copy across. So it's a really useful tool for reusing design data and then having the ability to modify that set of data for a particular job. Moving on to the last tip of the day, um, and it's one that's recently been introduced into Vault, is now you have the ability to control your templates and design data globally. Uh, previously, when you updated your design data, so your styles and standards for your drawings, your annotations, your materials, and things like that, if you come in and update your design data, it either needs to be stored on a server location or you need to go around and copy it to each user's uh, machine or ask them to get the latest version from Vault. Now, whenever design data is changed or if any of your templates are changed, instead what happens, whenever a user comes into Vault, sorry, into Inventor and logs into their Vault client from Inventor, what it will do is look at your files, your templates and design data that are in Vault, compare them to see if there are any changes. And if there are any changes, it will grab the latest versions from Vault and download them to the user's local working folder. So everybody is going to be working on that latest set of information. So I'll quickly do that now, just so that you can see the process. It's a very quick window so you might not see it but there were a few things that show up there where it leads reads the local files sees if there's any difference between the local data set and the vaulted data set and if there are any discrepancies it will grab the latest vaulted data set and download them to the user's local working folder so again they're working on the latest set of information so those are our five tips for today. I hope you had, well, found these useful and let us know in the comments if you'll be trying any of these out. Thank you.